Hey everybody, it's July 18th, 2020. We are at Haven Park. There's something structurally I want to show you here. I'll get to that in a second. Hey, time out. It's me, future Steve, to go back and interject something here inside this field video. I think it's important to talk about a little bit about stratigraphy and the fault contact present where this is and elaborate on it a little more. Haven Falls is located within the Delaware seven and a half minute quad just like the Delaware mine is. It's in the southeast part. Here is a zoom in of that map and here are the yellow stars you'd see a labeled Haven Falls. Some things are going to disappear off the map to make room for for other things, you can see the north arrow here in the upper left-hand corner. The scale on the bottom, it's in miles, sorry. The map was done in 1954, but you know, one mile is about 1.62 kilometers. So that's the basic map, and you can see a dash line on here that says Keweenaw Fault. We'll get to that. And what you see here is you'll see the Portage Lake Lava Series. That's what it was called back in the 50s. It didn't really formalize it. Now it's a Portage Lake Volcanics is just generally what we call it. The greens are lava flows. The oranges are considered conglomerates and we're going to get back to that here in, in a minute or two uh, towards the end but some are some aren't. So you have your Portage Lake Volcanics here but the whole thing isn't exposed at the section. Why not? Because we have a fault contact and I put the unconformity symbol on here for, and the word fault contact above it. But remember from my other videos, faults are not unconformities. They're a type of contact. They can cause rock units of different ages to be adjacent to one another, but that isn't always the case. Like with strike slip faults, there's no vertical movement, so there's no age change. <laughs> you know, so, you know, it, um, so they're technically not an unconformity. We have a bottom part of the Portage Lake Volcanics. We have our fault contact and then the Jacobsville is above. The Jacobsville was just called the Jacobsville Sandstone back then. I redefined it in 2016. The Jacobsville we now know is Neoproterozoic in age and it's just south of what the dash line called Keweenaw Fault. But on the north and northwest side of Loch LaBelle, it's not actually exposed. There are glacial deposits on top of this, but it's probably about 20, 30 feet below the surface. And using my revised stratigraphic column of the Mid-Continental Rift rocks in the Upper Peninsula and Wisconsin, well, neighboring Wisconsin, is this strat column here on the right. This is just going to show you in a little better way what's missing. So here we have blotted out with the white part are missing or faulted out strata. I, we don't really know what exactly is missing. We know some is faulted out. The units could entirely be there just deeply buried under the Jacobsville. We don't really know. No one's drilled that deep. So we're just going by what we know by the surface deposits. And the Jacobsville does crop out on Lake Superior, which is just like a couple miles to the southeast of here. There's a few kilometers. So it is exposed. It's just not exposed in this map area. So here we have a cross section really close to where the falls are next to the yellow star. We're looking at probably half a mile at the most. So it's not that far. So it's a reliable cross section. It doesn't really change in that distance. And here it's indicated by a red line. This is a section from an actual cross section on the map. Uh, you can see it's B to B prime over Loch LaBelle. And since this obviously isn't the whole thing, we don't have the B part. But here on the bottom is the cross section through the earth of the red line and map view. You can see that there's not really many beds labeled here. Well, why is that? Because we have the Keweenaw Fault. And here in the 50s, there's still some stratigraphic problems that hadn't been worked out. But in a nutshell, you can see the Keweenaw Fault here. I've made it a big bold line, our yellow star is still there. The U and the D are relative movements, U for up, D for down. And here on the bottom we have our relative cross section. The Keweenaw Fault is also labeled and we have our up and our half arrow pointing up and our down and our half arrow pointing down. And there's no bedding marked here because it's hard to tell here and there's a little confusion. You can see this PL, this little orange line here and it is through the park. And this little part is actually by the bridge over the creek 
just south of the falls, and I mentioned it in the video. It's not a conglomerate. It's mapped as a conglomerate, but you look at it, it's actually a breccia. And I'm not going to talk about why that is here. It has to do with the fact that of how we model the Keweenaw Fault. Like you see here, it's on. Here is a big, solid black line. So that's why you don't see any bedding. The lava flows here are going to dip towards the fault where they're real close to the fault. And away from that, they're going to level out before dipping the opposite way towards Lake Superior like they do at the Delaware Mine. The Jacobsville here probably has some proximal drag folds right by the fault, which would mean the beds would be turned almost vertical into the fault. They probably don't propagate much from there, and they probably level out from that because they're pretty level at Lake Superior, which, like I said, is only a couple miles, a few kilometers to the southeast, and it's exposed there. So anyway, I just wanted to give you a little background on the stratigraphy of the area, and let's get back into the video. You look around here, there's a nice little babbling brook, and it goes down. And you can kind of see through the trees there, you can kind of see water. That's Loch LaBelle. That is not Lake Superior. Lake Superior is still a couple kilometers, miles that way yet, south. Basically, north is behind me, essentially. The falls behind me. What's going on there is you see the water coming down? That's the Portage Lake Volcanics, Mid-Continental Lake Volcanics. Now, this here is obviously a boulder of conglomerate. This is not in place. This stuff was brought here to shore this creek up to keep it going the way it is. But there is some basalt at the bridge right there, too, that's just south of the bridge and outcrop. Why am I telling you all this? Well, because we are standing essentially on the Keweenaw Fault. The Keweenaw Fault is a huge fault that separates basically the Mesoproterozoic Mid-Continental Rift Rocks from the younger Neoproterozoic Jacobsville group of rocks. The Jacobsville is not exposed right here, but Loch LaBelle sits upon it. The falls are do follow the fault scar. Now we model this thing as a straight or as a solid line, but it's really not. There's about 200 meters, 650 feet of transition where you get like, you'll get faulting, you'll get a bunch of step faults and stuff like that and if you look at it in map view it'll that they'll interconnect and stuff like that but we just model it as a single dark line because it's easier on most maps but what happened here was you had the portage lake volcanics and as the basin subsided that stopped you had your orancho group deposited on top of it which i talked about already and above that is the not exposed jacobsville group now we know Portage Lake Volcanics are Mesoproterozoic. We know the Oronto group is Mesoproterozoic, but I'm gonna see how close the Frida is to that line. The Mesoproterozoic, Neoproterozoic line is arbitrarily set at a billion years. People tell you it's not an arbitrary designation, but it is. Uh, the Jacobsville is older than Cambrian, so it's older than 540 but it's younger than 950. That's as young as it can be because that's the age of its youngest zircon. So with the Jacobsville, what we should expect if things were status quo here is Portage Lake Volcanics would be behind us and then we should have Oronto group in the area, but we don't because what happened is that basin subsided, the Oronto group came, you had normal faulting on the sides as the uh, basin formed and once that basin ran out of volcanics, it really started to subside. That's when you get the Oronto group plastics. But I just wanted to show you guys that this is a false start. The water, see that little water there? There's another false start down there. There's another one just on the other side of the bridge I already showed you. But anyway, that's it. If you have any questions or comments, leave them below. I hope you learned something.